Hello, I'm Abier Exotricat and welcome back to the episode of my Minecraft Xbox Update Adventures Let's Play. This is the Let's Play where I've been playing through the various updates that have come out for Minecraft on the Bedrock version, as, as it now actually turns out to be. Uh, building stuff, killing stuff, and of course, destroying stuff. And in today's episode, I'm actually going to be doing something that I really don't like to do. And that sounds like a weird thing, right? Like, you're playing Minecraft, like, so you know, this is a video game, you can do whatever you want. But one of the things about this world that I've just been putting off for the longest time, and I think I'll feel a lot better if I stop putting off, is actually going to be a little bit of, let's call it terraforming, but mostly just fixing like creeper potholes and stuff like that, because this world will be going, uh, you know, again, hopefully before the end of the year, uh, into some form of download, and I want to make sure that if people do get the world, they're not like, wow, what's with this huge hole? It looks like kind of terrible, right? Because even though every single creeper hole has a fun story, it is still like, you're not sure. I believe we should totally do that. So first of all, we're going to repair our shovel. Pro tip, I, I always give this, but repairing a shovel using diamonds, really bad idea. Repair a shovel using shovels, and you get a full repair, you get it for cheaper. It's just a generally good thing to do because we're going to need the shovel a lot because most of these, uh, again, we're going to vaguely describe them as like creeper holes plus terraforming, need to be fixed in and need to be worked out by getting myself a bunch of dirt from somewhere else because there's also a few places I think we can make a way more attractive, uh, you know, like environment by digging stuff away. Like right here, for instance, although it's more natural, the mountain kind of goes up, then down, then up, then down, and then it goes up a little bit there and then it goes down. I think it'd be way prettier to make a big valley where the, you know, the rail's going above and then make the rail go perfectly on to another bit of mountain and then make it go over. I, I, I personally think having a big gap in the middle, like a, a good, you know, can you have a hill without a valley? Uh, can you can you be sad if you've never been happy? Can you be happy if you've never been sad? These are all questions you might be thinking, of course you can, to the, uh, is the answer to. But I think it's, uh, you know, it's kind of a fun one to do regardless. So yeah, in today's episode, we're going to be doing a lot of terraforming style stuff. Again, this is my least favorite thing to do in Minecraft because, okay, you know, actually, let me explain one of the reasons it's one of my least favorite things because there's a lot of them, but the biggest one is that when I first started playing Minecraft, Minecraft, I had a friend who got way too hardcore into the game. Like, he saw a creeper hole anywhere in the world, and he's like, you know, this thing has to be fixed immediately, and he'd, uh, you know, start doing this. He had dirt on him at all times, just in case a creeper blew up near me and I wouldn't fix the hole. And I'd be like, man, like, you know, you know this is like Minecraft, right? And this is like a tiny corner of the world no one's ever gonna see, and he'd be like, man, I, you, you, you can't leave a tree half chopped down, and you can't leave a creeper hole unfilled in. But again, I feel like, you know, just in case, Anyone like that guy is going to be downloading, watching, whatever these videos, it's something I should do. It's the, it's the least I can do, right? So that's what we're doing uh, today. We're mostly just going to be patching up small stuff like this to make slightly more attractive, or slightly more attractive, less attractive holes, or to basically just fix stuff like this. Because this is a creeper blew up, then another creeper blew up, then we exposed a cave, and <laughs> although it's kind of interesting in its own way, it's also a bit like, man, what even happened here? Because in case you're curious, this is the part of the world where I used to do my, so, you know, when a skeleton kills a creeper, you get a music disc. I needed a lot of music discs, because one, I was just amazed that it would happen, and two, I was like, you know, just in case they fix this, or just in case whatever, uh, I figure I should get a bunch of copies. And given that this uh, world is going to use music discs, I'm going to put a music disc kind of in it, I think it'd be kind of a fun thing to do. So yeah, mostly in today's video, I'm going to be removing dirt from places where I think there's too much, and putting it in places where there's less. And that sounds unbelievably dull on the surface, but it's just, it's a thing you have to do. And it's interesting because I used to be of the impression in life, and a part of me still kind of is, you know, especially in some areas, that the way, the way you know you've made it, or what defines a good life, is doing the fewest things you don't want to do. Like, the, the, the less, oh, we gotta go get some more dirt now. The more things you're doing in life that you don't want to do, the worse your life is. The less things you're doing in life that you don't want to do, or the more things you're doing that you actually do want to do, that generally means that you're having a better life, a better time, a better whatever, right? And although I think there's definitely some logic behind that, you know, it's not like it's a thought that comes out of nowhere, it also is something that does uh, kind of not make some sense in some ways, because so many people, you know, even the, the richest man on earth, if you look at, I don't think it's Bill Gates anymore, I think it might have actually uh, passed over to Jeff Bezos, but if you look at those people, they're doing things that you wouldn't find fun, and I, you know, you might even argue they don't find fun, it's just like, you know, necessary businessy tasks or whatever, and, um, you know, the reason they do that is not because they're just ridiculous and they're like, you know, 80 billion might not be a lot, enough to last my lifetime, no, you can tell looking at super rich people that the, the thing that gives them fulfillment and joy or whatever in life kind of might come from this business thing that they're doing. Uh, you know, a, a lot of people say that, like, oh yeah, people are, people just like to rack up zeros or whatever. That's just the fun game they're playing. It's a high score. And maybe, you know, there is a part of that for some people. But I think it also is, like, you know, 
at some level of like enjoyment, you can relax however you want. You know, let's say you want a third of your life to be relaxing, you can have the perfect relaxation for every part of that time, but every single person also needs some amount of like fulfillment and emotional drive and you know, goals and things to succeed and to be challenged by. And that's, that's why I find interesting that like, it kind of transfers over to Minecraft in a way. Like most games, I think it's absurd when people are like, oh yeah, so this game gets really good after you play for 20 hours. And it's like, so it's really bad for the first 20 hours. That's what you're saying there, right? And they'll be like, well, I mean, bad isn't the word I'd use, but yeah, it doesn't get good until after that, but it's totally worth going through it. And that's kind of a similar thing, right? Like you work really, really hard for something, uh, and then it feels better because you worked for it. You went through some bad before you got to the good, and that makes it way better. In, in the same way, I genuinely do think that if you are born, uh, you know, absurdly wealthy, like it's when, especially when you're, uh, you know, young, you think the dream would be to be, you know, born like into a rich family where it's just like, oh yeah, you don't have to worry about this. You can have 15 consoles and this and that. But I think it, it's way better. In again, as someone who has not had both experiences, but I have to assume that it's way better to be born, uh, and you know, to work your own way up, and then to realize like, oh yeah, all these things I never thought I could have. Guess what? I totally can have them because you know I worked or whatever for them. I personally, I, I think that's a much better uh, thing to have, thing to do, thing to be. And uh, yeah, it's just uh, okay. So we're gonna be a lot more careful about this. We're just gonna have a little bit over here, just to make this kind of make some sense. Because my basic goal is to make this look like it's part of the mountain, kind of naturally, so that this looks like a perfect valley between where the rail's going above. Personally, I love it when there's like a, you know, like a perfect little valley and you know, that's what we're doing here today. As absurd as that sounds, it's what we have to do. So yeah, in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about uh, not only just the the big important consequence of like, you know, sometimes really bad things happen, but uh, it's some uh, one of the few things that always makes me feel better about any awful situation is like, man, if, if I can survive this okay, imagine how great it's gonna be on the other side. Uh, any single like uh, bad breakup or bad situation yeah. where I've been like, man, Everything is like all over the place right now. It's like, well, on the other hand, like things are really bad right now. Imagine how much better it's going to get next time. Uh, uh, you know, someone, someone once told me that like, you know, every single, uh, you know, like job or romantic relationship or anything like that in your life tends to get better over time. Like mo most people, okay, so again, this is like a really specific, I would say error in how we like judge romantic relationships, but no one's ever like, oh yeah, my best girlfriend was actually for you know, wives ago or four girlfriends ago. This is kind of just a compromise I found because I'm getting old. No one, no one says that out loud. I don't think most people think it privately. Uh, and that's because, you know, you always get better. It's like, wow, if I'm sad about this, imagine how sad I'll be about my next, uh, you know, like romantic failure or whatever. And it's, yeah, no, that, that's like an interesting way to think about that too. So yeah, if you ever, you ever go through something bad like that, just remember, if it's that bad now, imagine how much worse it'll be later and therefore how much better it'll have to be to be that much worse which is absurd on the surface, but actually makes some sense. But anyway, yeah, the reason I, I find Minecraft be hugely fascinating because it kind of has a lot of aspects of the same life thing in it, where like, unlike just, okay, so we have to find more holes to patch up, by the way, they're everywhere in this world. Uh, and also, even though there's a lot of caves over here, which we could leave uncovered, I want to cover them up a little bit more, just to li like, just to, just to make the world a little bit nicer. Even though this is a naturally spawned thing, I'll still fix it. But yeah, um, another interesting, uh, you know, thing along this same line is that Minecraft, has a lot of aspects of real life kind of blended into it. Like, unlike other games where it's all about the entertainment right now, right here, Minecraft is a lot more of like, oh yeah, you put in work and then it pays off later and it's a whole own, it's it's a whole interesting thing like that, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, it's not something that you necessarily think about, but it is something that is necessarily true and maybe you didn't realize that. So yeah, with that said, um, I've been having a lot of like deep uh, thoughts about this because in case you're curious as to what I've been up to in the past week, because that's a thing we talk about here. Um, it's actually been a lot of like video stuff. I, I after like a long period of, um, you know, like there was a lot of <laughs> times on the channel where it's like, uh, you know, like let's, let's say like the same number of people are subscribing as I'm subscribing and like, oh yeah, you know, I was considering like, well, this is the end of the, the line, you know, we're like, we're working out how to stop that, but it's, you know, unless something does change, that's what's gonna happen. And uh, so yeah, I've, I've had like a, a really good week in terms of like just purely thinking up like, okay, ideas, this, that, that, and trying to work out fairly new concepts. And I think it's, I think it's worked. I think you'll see stuff come out over time. And um, yeah, I guess one of the, the key messages though that I wanna kind of make as part of that is that one of the, th also, should we patch this one up? It's a weird tunnel. You know, we'll patch it up. Just, just to make sure that everything looks good and okay by the standards. But. Um, one, one of the things about uh, having 
you know, kind of worked on the channel so much, is there's now going to be the kind of people who are like, oh yeah, so you've always changed in this way, and it's like, well, that's that's a thing that I guess is, is going to have to happen, right? So anyway, um, I sometimes when I go too deep, like too many layers into a topic, I feel like I abstract so far away it doesn't even make sense, like, you know, because you can talk about any topic on the surface and everyone understands, like, hey, what do you guys think about um, beef? It's tasty, right? It's a good meat. It's better than pork, that's for sure, and it's almost as good as chicken. Arguably better than chicken. Wow. And everyone's like, yeah, I do sometimes eat beef, and it is worse than chicken. And then sometimes you're like, man, isn't it interesting that, uh, you know, like, everyone eats meat even though we know it's horrific because it's just, like, the lesser of two evils in our mind, even though it's definitely not lesser of two evils. And I was like, oh, yeah, I, I did consider vegetarianism. Then you're like, oh, and then you go, like, a third layer deep, and then you can use that same question as, like, do you ever think it's funny that we have so many things where we objectively know something's wrong and we still do the right thing anyway? And you're like, oh, I, I don't know about this. And sometimes I feel like I go way too many layers deep so that we're just like, what What are you even talking about? So I, can't, I thought this was a, a conversation about <laughs> grass flocks in Minecraft and why you hate doing them. But no, yeah, it's, it's interesting that Minecraft has aspects of things you don't want to do. Of like, you know, Minecraft is a game which has a lot of things that people enjoy. You know, there are so many moments that you love in it, but there's also a lot of moments that you don't enjoy and maybe that's part of what makes it so beautiful and so successful. The fact that, unlike other games where, you know, it's purely focused on that one aspect, it focuses on every single, every single part of, like, the human desire to succeed and accomplish and to be artistic and whatever else. Because you can do whatever you want. It's a sandbox game which truly opens up the possibilities of anything. So, I don't know, that, that, that's something I think, at least. Maybe I sound crazy. And if so, I guess we'll kind of, like, bounce away from that a little bit and uh, kind of talk about... Uh, something that's been on my mind a lot this past week because when to be on your phone and when not to be is I think the biggest the biggest struggle of tw of our time honestly you know this this might sound like I'm being melodramatic and let's be honest I'm melodramatic enough that like you know you, I could totally see why you would believe that like okay so this is another just absurd point you're gonna bring up but I do think like knowing when you should be on your phone and knowing when it's like rude to be or whatever is like a really really big problem because, <laughs> you know, I love the time, uh, as soon as you pull up your phone, you have disengaged from the social interaction and it's really hard to properly pull back in. Uh, I, I'm sure everyone's been in that situation where they've seen like, man, yeah, like one person uh, pulls out their phone, then another guy does it, and now everyone, instead of talking to each other, we're all just sat at the bar, restaurant, whatever else, just on our phones doing what we like the most. Oh God, I forgot about that. Guess I'm not digging any more dirt anytime soon. Terrible time to realize I've basically run out of dirt, but that, I'm sure that's happened to like everyone at some point. It's like, oh yeah, so when is the right time to be on your phone? And this is some, oh my God, <laughs> look how slow it is, even with efficiency five. Um, and because cause this cause this is something I think about a lot, because I, I, I'm, I am, I'm on my phone probably too much in an average day. And I wonder like, is that good for me? Because as soon as you stop using your phone for a bit, it is so great to come back and be like, oh, look how much has happened since I've been gone. It's it's great. It's wonderful. There's all, all these, you know, all, all this stuff to be seen. But at the same time, uh, it's, you know, like, I, I think I think it should in theory be that when you pull out your phone, you know, out of, out of thing, you can easily put it back away and you can be done. But yeah, everyone, always, everyone knows, even if you don't, like, outwardly know it. Everyone knows that the best interactions are the ones where no one has their phone out and you're all, you're focused on each other, you know? The, the best date is one where you talk for hours, not one where like, oh yeah, so uh, I, just, I really have to respond to this. It's like, you know, like work's hitting me up tomorrow or whatever. That's that's a drag away from a, a you know, that, that makes a bad thing, not a good thing. But yet, despite that, uh, everyone does it all the time regardless. And I think the struggle, the, you know, the answer to this struggle, because that's, that's what we're mostly here to talk about, I guess, is that, yeah, if, if you're on your phone, it weakens the... What, what it is, is it means that you're not available for the time you're on your phone, and if you're not available, and someone else is there, and they're like, well, if he's not available, what am I gonna do? And it starts like a chain reaction. Because even if you can't contribute to a given conversation... So again, I've been in lots of awkward-ish situations, both over the past, like, you know, week, but also in general. Like, whenever there's a social interaction thing going on, I'm like, well, I have <laughs> not really much of a way to contribute to this one. We're gonna use some oak, by the way, get get this done as well while we're here, I guess. 
uh, you know, you're like, well, I have nothing to contribute. This this is someone that this guy knows from a festival that I've had no, I don't even know about, let alone have been to, and I've never met this person before, and I barely even know this guy. So I guess I'm just gonna chill here. If you want to put out your phone, you can give up on the whole thing. But it's also worth being like, oh yeah, I'll just wait here patiently. You stare, you 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 accept that you're in, you know, you're a part of it, because otherwise it's like. What I like to believe, th this is how I think phones actually work in 2018. So again, I'm talking about like, reading social media midway through, not in terms of all of the amazing functions they have, but what a phone is, is it's like, the ability to teleport away into your own world, into, uh, you know, like, you know how daydreaming, you can't tell when someone's doing it, besides looking at their eyes or whatever? It's like if you could have a button on your face that said, I am daydreaming right now. There are more important things to be thought about, so I'm thinking about those at current moment. And, um, you know, you might you might disagree with that. You might say, no, nah, that's a bit of a dramatic way to put it, Toy Cat. But it is, uh, it is something that's true. Like, you, you're in a world that's personalized for you. Twitter, YouTube, all these things. You know how the recommendation algorithms work? It's literally, these are the things designed to keep your attention for as long as possible. That's, that's all social media is. It's a thing designed to trap your attention. So when you put out your phone, you're effectively saying, you know, what? I'm gonna go somewhere where things are designed for me. I can't deal with this conversation not about things that are about me. And although that, again, it's an entirely fine thing to do, it also shows that you're not available. So I think that to bring this all back around to the start of the video, that one of the things that you want to do the most at any given time is be on your phone. It's it's always a perfectly personalized world, but I think sometimes doing things you don't want to do is just as important, arguably, in fact, significantly more important than doing the things you want to do. Sometimes, even though, oh, see, look at this, for instance, there's just, a creeper blew up and I ignored it and someone's gonna find this and be like, well, I, don't, I don't like this and it does bug me because if, if I am gonna have this map be, uh, you know, even even if it's like a thing where people are buying it just to support the channel, I still wanna make sure you get something that you feel like is at least a moderately finished product. So that's that's why a lot of this stuff is being worked on, by the way. But no, um, it's, it's interesting because all the things you don't wanna do are the things you need to do the most, whether it be not being on your phone or whatever, and that's what that's what makes them so rewarding. It seems like on the surface, like you're just achieving nothing. Oh, I forget the beacons don't work properly on Bedrock. If you transfer this world to Java or to console, it's gonna look so much better, by the way. Because what even is this? It works at this distance. I go this far away, and I can't see anything. Like, what even... What is the point of that, you know? <laughs> oh, sad face, sad face. But yeah, to go back to, um, to my main point, though, also, this, I, we have to wait for this um, stats effect to go away, and I can't even check it because my stats effect button doesn't work. So, I guess we just assume that it's going away in the next few seconds, and then we start digging again. How wonderful. But yeah, no, um, I think one of the most important things you can fundamentally do is a thing you don't want to do. I think that sounds ridiculous. That sounds absurd. And a lot of people are going to listen to that and say, no, I'm not going to. I'm going to stick to things I just like. But when people say get outside your comfort zone, the reason they say that is not because there are great things outside your comfort zone. If, if we're being honest, most of the things you probably like are inside it. But there are a lot of things that you do like that you don't know about because they're not inside your comfort zone. And you, there are, it's also really, really... Uh, okay, so for instance, one of the recommendations, I try to do this every now and then, it is, a, it is one of the best things you can do that no one does because you just your brain doesn't want to tell you to do it. But have a cold shower. For real, okay, you know, pro tip with Toy Cat, you, most of you aren't gonna listen to this, the vast majority, but have a cold shower tomorrow. It's awful. It is literally, it is the equivalent of being, uh, you know, like just assaulted, but by your shower, you know? Your shower just decides, you know what? This Toy Cat guy, he sure probably has some money. I reckon I can beat the heck out of him and try and get that. It, it feels like you're being mugged by your shower. Um, it is, it is horrendous, the physical, uh, you know, downsides of a, a cold shower. But when you do it, you get out of it, and it's like, this is over now. I have showered, which is an important thing to do in any day. Like, even having a hot shower, some days I'm like, man, this is this is a, a process of things I've got to do that I'm not sure if I want to do right now. But um, if you have a cold shower in the morning, the moment you're done with it, the rest of your day is like, oh, it's so much better than that cold shower. It's like, again, it's almost like I feel like people who have near-death experiences who are then like, oh, but I saw my life flash and now I want to do all the things I missed. It's like, yeah, because you realized all of a sudden just how important the things that you like are. Um, and I think having a cold shower is the best way to simulate that. So yeah, to bring everything together, because this might have sounded like a lot of unrelated ramblings, and maybe it is. Maybe you think, you're not so cat. 
this is a sign you've gone insane. Your Let's Plays stop making sense to even the most uh, attentive of listeners. But something... Also, how do I deal with this? I think I want to leave a little bit of a hole. But, you know, maybe I don't. Maybe I don't want to do that at all. Maybe we'll just cover it a little bit and then see what happens. But, no, uh, to uh, kind of... Uh, Bring everything into a full circle, so you can properly explain, so I can properly understand, ex explain and understand, and hopefully you can understand. I should say, is that in sometimes the best thing isn't the best thing. You, uh, your brain is designed because you know we're all descended from cavemen, from people who can barely survive. So, for instance, the reason you like chocolate is because it's super calorie dense. It's great if you don't know when your next meal is. However, like in terms of in the wild. However, when you do know when your next meal is, you might as well get some more healthy uh, things inside of your body, which is, so your body has a natural desire to eat things which are super, super, super sweet. And that's, you know, like sometimes there is a place for chocolate in the world. I, I like eating chocolate too, but you couldn't eat it every meal. If you ate chocolate every meal, you would feel, one, you'd feel sick. And two, you'd start to realize like, man, this is not that good. I'm not even getting like nutrition. I'm just getting like some form of calorie inside me, which is technically fueling my body, but in the worst way possible. But if you, um, you know, if you eat a balanced diet and then once a week you have a bit of chocolate, it's like, oh, this is the, the, the best snack or a milkshake or a five guys, whatever your particular thing is. It's like, man, this snack is good stuff. And I think in the same way, in a very similar way, in, in Minecraft and in real life, you know, whether in terms of being on your phone or in terms of everything you do, or in terms of filling up these dirt holes that you know you hate filling up and that <laughs> literally kills the part of your soul on the inside, as soon as you've done with it, one, you'll feel accomplished. It's like, yeah, I did the thing that was better in the long run. Like, something about doing what you want to do is good. Uh, I, I think the, the, thing, the thing that makes achieving goals great is not that you're doing things you know, that past you wants. It's that you're just, you're setting something and you're proving that you can overcome your desire at any given moment. And in the same way, if you can do something which is necessary, but kind of boring on the surface, like say filling over holes, on, on the surface it seems pointless because I mean like, what is even the point of these holes? Who's even gonna notice them? But well, on, a, on a deeper level than that, it's like, yeah, now we've done this, it's accomplished. You can look at it, you can see the world looks a little bit nicer. Even if only nicer to people who complain about random holes in your Minecraft world, which admittedly, it's a small segment of people who are probably very picky and will now start complaining about this elephant. But on the other hand, it's like, now that's done, uh, you know, this this was the, you know, me eating vegetables. Now when I eat the chocolate later, you know, there's a, a few things I really want to do in this world, such as, uh, you know, work on the gold farm or do things like that that just take a lot of effort and pre, pre preparation. Um, then now when I get to those things, it's like, yeah, I, I've earned that. And that's also, how not being on your phone is. Like, if you can just not use your phone between like 7 a.m. and like 10 p.m. when you go to bed and when you wake up or whatever, uh, those are also terrible times to use it. But, you know, then it's like, oh, there's so much that collects. Because um, I hear this story a lot from people who are like basically social media addicts. They're like, if you, if you browse Twitter and you refresh it every five minutes, nothing happens. You, you see a tweet that you don't care about and you're like, that was information, I guess. Uh, <laughs> uh, whereas if you if you leave it all day, things happen while you're gone. Uh, that's the best bit about the news, in my opinion. Like, if you read the news nonstop, nothing exciting happens. If you read the news once a day, it's like, oh, something huge actually happened today. And I think, yeah, for, whenever there's something which is refreshing nonstop, knowing when to check it is important. That's, um, and I, I would say, similarly, uh, knowing when to do the important things in, in thing is important. And similarly, I would say that have a cold shower. Seriously, you know, if, if there's one piece of advice, if there's one thing you ever listen to me about, have a cold shower tomorrow. Literally, just turn your shower on the minimum setting, have a, have a, have a nice cold shower, and uh, then tell me how it goes. In fact, before next week's episode, if I remember, you know, I'll, I'll just do it tomorrow, uh, before tomorrow's stream. I'm gonna have a cold shower in the morning, and I'll tell you how it goes. And you, you do the same. Because, I swear to God, after being so ridiculously assaulted, because it's the worst feeling thing that isn't bad for you. In fact, there's a lot of benefits, like health benefits in a ice shower, as I understand it. But interestingly enough, uh, yeah, it'll, it'll make you feel good. And in the same way, you know, try try refreshing, you know, your socials, your Instagrams and your whatever else, slightly less a day, including YouTube. As a YouTuber, I'm saying this, like, if, if you check YouTube less, I will make less money because you will click list my videos. 
So I have a reverse interest in saying this, but just check it, you know, twice a day, three times a day, four times a day, whatever the number is, but not every five minutes. And you'll be a happier, healthier person. This sounded like preaching, so I guess to counterbalance all the things I've just said, actually ignore what I said, go get some ice cream, go to my Instagram, I've posted some very tasty looking waffles there, go get some of those. In fact, I'll go do some right now. Thank you very much for watching, and I guess I'll see you all in episode 372 next week. Uh, again, this world is going to be available for download on the Minecraft store at some point, hopefully before the end of the year. There's a lot of tiny things like this we're doing over the course of the next few weeks that you'll see kind of come into play, because I want to finish a few certain builds before this goes live. I finished the wood- actually, you know, I said I was going, but screw it. Who's to tell me when to end a video? I finished the wood factory now. You can see the walls are now properly completed. Um, I finished the bed. I finished a lot of different things. Uh, the desert still needs to be finished, but like, and so does the um, the museum. But besides that, we're doing we're doing pretty solid, and I'm I'm liking the progress we've made. So yeah, with that said, thank you for watching, and I guess I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.